I'm really in my tabbing era. This week is the week of tabbing books and... Hello my loves and thank you for joining me. It's Kirsten and we're at the start of another weekly vlog, starting on a weekend because my weekly vlogs have no sense. <laughs> we just start them and finish them whenever we feel like it, but that's absolutely fine. This week I actually know exactly what I want to read. If you saw last week's vlog you'd know I was stuck between two different books of what I wanted to read and then the book I went with ended up being a massive disappointment. So I'm going to go with the other book that I have been thinking about reading for the last couple of weeks and and that is For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing. This was on my February TBR, so I'm quite pleased I'm getting this one read. I haven't finished my February TBR, but that's, that's fine, it is what it is. This one may not be in my February wrap up though, because I'm hoping to film that on Monday, so I'm probably not gonna get this finished in time. So this might go into March wrap up, technically. We'll see. This book is a dark academia slash thriller book, and it's all about an English teacher. He was, really good, very dedicated, but then things start going wrong and it's meant to be very sinister. I got this as a recommendation from Ashley from A Frolic for Fiction. I'll have her channel linked below. She was talking about it, mentioned Dark Academia, went straight on my list. I'm just really hoping that this is really good because last week the reading wasn't as good as it could have been. Like it wasn't bad, but I think because the main book I was reading across that week wasn't it, it then meant that my reading week overall just felt a little bit lacklustre. I still read two other books that I liked and enjoyed, but I really want a book that makes me go, ah, oh, yes, this is why I enjoy reading. And one of the books did give me that last week, but it was such a short one. So I'm really hoping that this one gives me that and I can just get over that disappointment that I had from last week. Uh, so yeah, really, really hoping that this is going to do that and pull through for me today. So the plan is to start this. I am on night shift this week, starting tomorrow. So I don't know how much reading I'm actually going to get done across the week, but this is definitely the main priority. And then I will start the March TBR. Not sure what I'm going to go with from there because the March TBR isn't that big and I don't know so I might I might just mood read before I start it properly we'll see how I feel because I am on nights so I'm going to let myself be very lenient and just nice to myself and just go with what I feel like reading because it is night shift and I struggle with the nights I'm not gonna lie so thinking that's the plan but I have some book mail I'm very excited this book cost me two pounds I was so excited when I found this one this was on Whose recommendation video was this? Oh, I can't remember. I was watching a video and someone was talking about it and they said how Vita Nostra, it reminded them of Vita Nostra, the synopsis of it. Actually, I think it was Cody's channel. I have her channel links below. I'm pretty sure it was Cody's channel. And she found this book and it was recommended to her and it's meant to be really weird and unusual and it reminded her of Vita Nostra. It's also when I found out that Vita Nostra is actually a series. I didn't know that it was a series. Uh, there's actually two books, so I want to get the book Vita Nostra. It's a Russian book that, obviously I read the translated version, Dark Academia. I listened to it, I think it's two years ago now. I haven't stopped thinking about it. I really want to get the physical copy and then I'll get the second book as well. But she said about this book and I'm super intrigued by it. Like I, it sounds really good. And that is The Rabbit back literature society and this one is also translated so this one i believe is translated from finnish let me check yes so it's originally published in finland and it has been translated by lola m rogers this is an older book so this book was published in 2013 it's it's really weird. I'm going to read you the synopsis. I'm so excited for this. The Society is an elite group whose members must be very special and very talented. Ella Milana is a literature teacher and the professor of beautifully curving lips. No. <laughs> the professor. Oh god. Ella Milana is a literature teacher and the possessor of beautifully curving lips. But when she starts trying to unearth the truth behind the society, Ella finds a lot more than she bargained for. What is the game? Why are the words inside books rearranging themselves? And what explains the strange disappearance of an author in a whirlwind of snow? In this chilling, darkly funny novel, the uncanny brushes up against every day in the most beguiling and unexpected of ways. 
I'm so excited. Oh my god, I want to read that now. That sounds so good. Oh, do I? Maybe I should do that. Maybe we should have a Dark Academia reading week. Because that just sounds really good. And like the weirdness of it all, I feel like is going, I mean that synopsis does give me Vita Nostra vibes, but also Bunny as well, because that's just an unusual elite where the weirdness keeps happening. And I did really enjoy them. That's a, a weird Dark Academia is a section of Dark Academia that I just really, really enjoy. And I just can't constantly think about it. Like I can't put it down. So yeah. Oh, maybe I'll give this one a read as well. We'll see. Like I said, the rest of this week, apart from For Your Own Good, I have no plans of what I'm going to be reading this week. It's going to be very much mood dependent. But this I had never heard of, and I'm pretty certain it was Cody. If I've got it wrong, I'm really sorry, but I'm pretty certain it was Cody. I will double check the video that I saw it in and have the person linked below. Um, but yeah, absolutely excited for this book cannot wait never heard anyone talking about it before that video so yeah this sounds sounds so good but yeah okay well that's it for the start of this vlog not sure what we're reading for the latter half but we're definitely starting off with this one and i hope you are all doing very well let me know how have you been what have you been up to what are you currently reading have you read either of these two books that i've mentioned and we're just gonna see for today though i actually want to pop into london and i'm thinking to hide away in waterstones the big one at piccadilly circus i think i've got that right um and sit down and start reading this. That is what I would really like to do. I also want to tab this as well. I enjoy tabbing my Dark Academia reads. So I'm thinking that's what I'm going to do today. It is meant to be raining on and off as well. So I think it's the perfect time just to hide away in there, out of the way. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So come and join us and I will update you at some point with some reading news. And fingers crossed, this reading week is going to be so good and just, the boost that I need for the end of this month instead of how it was last month because last month, last week, because it was disappointing. I am feeling so rough today, it's actually unreal. Like, I don't know whether it's like I ate, I doubt that, or whether it's just something that's going around, but yeah. So work's not happening today. <laughs> um, hopefully I'll get better soon that I can get back to work, but yeah, that's not, that's not happening. Before I started feeling like hell though, I had a really nice day yesterday, it was very chill. Um, I even went to the Waterstones, like I said I was going to I think I said I was going to, that I was going to go sit there and read and I decided to have a little look around, as you do before that and I found some really good books, I'm really pleased with them so I'm going to show you those quickly One of the first ones I saw was this, it's absolutely stunning This is Agatha Christie, Sinister Spring and it's a short story collection of all sorts of different stories so we have ones from Hercule Poirot, we have Miss Marple and we have Tommy and Tuppence and I'm really really excited to read these. I love the short story collections and I've decided that the short story collections because they keep bringing them out in these beautiful editions I'm going to collect them in this and then the normal rest of the books will be in the paperback editions that I have but all the short stories I want like this because I have one more set which is <sighs> up there which is this one which is the Tuesday Club Murders um and that's a short story collection of all of like Miss Marple short stories and then we have this one and they're both the same hardbacks so I definitely think what I'm gonna do is all the hardback editions of the short stories I'm gonna collect those I love them I think they're beautiful and I love that this one it really is spring it's got like the gold foil in and it's just it's stunning I love these so I saw that and I wasn't going in to buy a book and I wasn't going to pick it up but I loved it so I'm definitely going to keep my eye out for more of those short story collections so I can have that because I think it's going to be stunning and then the actual Miss Marple books and eventually when I move on to Hercule all of those will be in the paperbacks so I think that'd be really cool unless of course like there's the occasional one which is like ends up being a favourite then I might also get it in these editions because they're just lovely and then another one that I've had my eye on for 
I won't say a little while, maybe a few weeks, is Promise Boys and this is by Nick Brooks and this is one that I picked up because again it's on a list of like if you like Dark Academia, have, have this, try this. And this one is a YA thriller, I think the Dark Academia aspect is just because it's set in a school um, which again I can't wait to do that video and actually discuss that because I think that's a big thing Anyway, um, but this one is Urban Promise Prep School Vows to Turn Boys Into Men um, and then we have certain students, they are forced to follow the prestigious program's strict rules, extreme discipline is what it takes to be college bound, but someone ends up murdered and then the police suspects this trio of boys and they're having to prove that they're not the killer and band together and stuff so it sounds really good i'm really excited and it's the waterstones exclusive with the red edges and then i did relax in the cafe downstairs and start reading for your own good this is a really easy read i'm up to chapter 16 page 68 the chapters are really really short i really like that i have started tabbing just one color of tabs i think i'm going to do a second color you really can't see that very well but I've chosen this like light blue colour so it matches. Actually so I was picking out the tabs and I had loads of fun doing that. This is really good. We're following our main character Teddy, he's the English teacher and he's horrible, like he's a horrible person to follow and you're really not meant to like him, he is so disturbing and that's what this first set of tabs is. So it's a really pale blue and they are all tabbing moments of when he is just seeming really disturbed or he's doing really really questionable things and it's yeah he, he's creepy. We do follow three different perspectives. Teddy is one of them. He's the English teacher. We have Zach who is a student and I feel really bad for him because Teddy's going out for Zach because Teddy, he works for a prep school. So all the parents are paying loads of money to get these kids into the school and so it's very elitist and Teddy hates that. He hates... I, actually, let me just do a first line thing because I think the first line sums that up really well. Entitlement has a particular stench. Pungent, bitter, almost brutal. And that's the way Teddy sees it. He very much dislikes entitled people and he sees Zach as someone who feels very entitled to things. And I feel bad for Zach because you then get his perspective and he, he doesn't feel that way. He feels really frustrated at the lot in his life and what his parents force him to do and stuff. So you see Teddy penalising him a lot and that's what he does. He punishes students for seeming entitled and I just think that's horrendous and the way he punishes them is just so petty it's uh, he's not a nice person and then we have another perspective of another teacher and that's Sonia and for some reason Teddy's really great out for Sonia he doesn't like her at all the things that he does to her is like <sighs> wow um but Sonia is this teacher and she tries really hard all the time for her students for the school she's you know she seems like a genuinely good person and Teddy just has it out for them and it's just yeah but I'm also really hooked and I really want to keep reading even though he is such a despicable character I'm really enjoying it and because the chapters are so short like sometimes they can be like two pages long you're flying through this so I can't wait to carry on with this and I'm gonna have the time to read because yeah Food is not agreeing with me at the minute, so uh, it's going to be a long couple days, I think. But at the same time, perks, because at least I get to read. It's just not great when I'm meant to be at work, but is what it is. So you never know, I might actually get this book finished in time for the monthly wrap-up on Monday, because I'm not doing much else. I doubt I'm going to finish the whole book in one day, but imagine if I did. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling and leave you there and yeah we'll see see what happens but i think book shopping wise it was quite a productive day uh but yeah okay anyway i'm gonna i'm gonna go
Good morning. I last updated you saying that I wasn't going into work because I wasn't feeling great and turns out that I wasn't feeling great because I have an infection. So I haven't been to work yesterday either and I'm not going in today. So fun times. But it has meant I've got quite a bit of reading done, which you know what, silver lining and all that. So I have two books to talk to you about and as we can see, tabs are being used on both of these. But the first one that I actually finished was For Your Own Good and I really enjoyed this book. It is tabbed to high heaven. I've just, I've loved it. I thought it was really good. You know what I need? I need my tripod so I actually don't have to hold my camera and can show you my tabbing system. Two seconds. Okay, look, it's not the best angle, but we're going with it. But yes, I have quite an intense tabbing system. I'm pretty sure the last time I updated on this, I had just the one tab going. Um, and instead I have four. It was quite intense. So the light blue stayed the same and that was for the character being really quite creepy and unusual and just, yeah, gross. <laughs> so creepy, sinister and petty were the words that I used for any of the light blue tabs. Then we have dark blue for murder and suspects relating to the murder because there was a murder that happened and honestly there was a lot that went on with it. There was a couple of suspects. One thing I will say about this book is that you kind of know exactly who's done it. There is a little bit of questioning for a very small part but you kind of know who's done it and that is the point of this book because what you're seeing is other characters trying to piece it together to work out who's doing this and how easily the truth can be twisted to make it seem like it's somebody else and I liked that side of things because it was unique. You don't normally get that in a book, normally you have no idea who it is because you don't have the perspective of the person that did it um, but in this we had the perspective of the person that did it and then the other characters trying to figure it all out and I just, I really enjoyed that. I thought it was just a really interesting concept. Did make a couple of the chapters a little bit slow. So there's like a little part here where I didn't really tab that much and that's because it felt almost a bit repetitive because the characters were going through trying to find the things that we already knew. But at the same time, I still enjoyed it and the chapters are so short, it felt so fast that it didn't bother me. Um, but I imagine some people may not like that, but for me, it just it didn't bother me. I was interested to see how they were gonna work it all out and how the person that did it kept misleading people. I thought that was really good. Anyway, back to the tabs. We have this light peachy color for delusions and that is because of specific character is so deluded. The things that they come out with, it's just mind-blowing about how deluded they are and the justifications and things. It was just, it was a whole thing. So it happened once or twice when I was originally tabbing with just the blue, the light blue, and I was like, mm, I don't know, if this keeps up I'm gonna have to, and then it did, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to. And that's something that I do find interesting with tabbing, because I don't go in and start a book with a tabbing system, I go back and add tabs when I feel like there's been a certain amount that I think I should be tabbing, which is exactly what happened with this last one, which is like this bluish grey, and that is, things that's like entitlement, um, the commentary on elitism, the class division between upper and lower class that's highlighted a lot in this book because we are at an elite school um, and with that it was something that I kept thinking about should I tab, should I not, but it kept coming up so often that I decided to go back and tab all of those points. It did drop off towards the end, you didn't have quite as much commentary on it but it definitely in the first three quarters of this book was a prevalent part. So yeah, I just, I really enjoyed this. This was really fun. I enjoyed tabbing it and I've mentioned this before but I do find tabbing things like thrillers and murder mysteries to be so much easier than going into a book without that because I think you already have a basis of looking out for the things to do with the murder, looking out for suspicious behaviour and so it makes that so much easier. However, saying that, by the way, love this book. Really good. Enjoyed it. Like I said, that little part in the middle, a bit slower because people are trying to figure out what we already know. But I loved the twists and turns in this. I thought it was fantastic. Some of the twists were just like jaw dropping. I was like, what? I literally, this book kept me up so late 
finishing it. It was so good. Really, really enjoyed it. Just fast paced, lots of twists and turns. Loved the things that we were doing and I loved the different characters and following their development and their mental state. And it's just, it was good. I really enjoyed that book. That was a good start. Well, end to February. Yeah, wasn't exactly a start. Um, But talking about tabbing, <laughs> back to that. I started Ovid's Metamorphosis yesterday. This is on my March TBR. And I said in that video that I'm probably not going to read all of it in this month, but read it slowly. And yesterday I was just really feeling it. I was really in the mood to pick up something like this. Um, and so I went with that mood. I don't know where I'm going to today or not. I might just read a few pages. Um, at the minute I am up to page 60 and this is book three. This is something that I'm actually enjoying more than I thought I would. So it's epic poetry, but it feels like a fairy tale. It's kind of like an original Grimm's fairy tales. It follows that sort of rhythm when I'm reading it. I'm really enjoying that. Now this is all speculation because obviously I'm not a classicist. I haven't studied any of this, but if from what I remember from little snippets of research that I've done, just my own enjoyment. All of this poetry and stuff, it was more orally recorded rather than written down. And so because the stories were passed orally, I feel that lends to the fairy tale rhythm like to this tale. And even though it's poetry, it flows really well, like I'm reading a fairy tale. And that's what I really like. Obviously this is mythology, but it does feel like I'm reading that sort of fairy tale just from the way it's written and it just flows so well. Also it's not repetitive like the Iliad was um, that I found that the descriptions of people were introduced in the exact same way every single time whereas in this book you're not really getting that and I'm enjoying that. It's also a bit easier because it's broken down into so many short stories so they do follow on from one another. Originally I said in my TBR how I was going to just pick out things that I wanted to read and I'm not going to do that because they do flow from one another the different stories so I think it is better to read it in order but they are also separated by little breaks so some of them the poems could be one page some of them are like three or four pages long but they are all individual stories it's just some flow on from one another where you just get introduced to a character and then it follows them for a little while for that like any short story collection there's going to be some that you really like and some that you don't so far I've had a couple where I'm like mm, yeah that's fine but quite a lot of them I'm really enjoying and I do have a tab system going on. I haven't written it up yet because I don't know if I'm adding to it yet, but at the minute I have three different types of tabs going on. So the first one is this sort of really pale pink colour and that's just for quotes that I'm really enjoying. So for example, the first thing that I tabbed was on page five. It says, this is the passage from the ages of mankind. Last came the race of iron. In that hard age of baser vein, all evil straight broke out and honour fled and truth and loyalty replaced by fraud, deceit and treachery and violence and wicked greed for gain. I really enjoyed it and that's what I mean like it's actually really easy to read that's not hard to understand at all I do always get a bit nervous when I'm going into something like this because am I going to like it am I going to understand it but actually it's, it's so accessible I really like it um the writing is tiny but because it's also done in poetry format it's it feels long but it's not long um don't know if that makes any sense anyway moving on moving on the next tab color that i have is a sage green it's very very pale you can't really see that but it's very light green um and that is for all the times that women are having to be transformed because of men or men who are overpowering women not giving them a chance to choose for themselves that have decided well look you're beautiful I now want you and it's taken away their choice in everything um and that's what that is and there's a lot because it's Greek myth and I'm only like I said 60 pages in but I already have quite a few parts with that in there um it's just part and parcel of mythology unfortunately 
um, but there is a lot and I've, I've it's a weird thing to say that I've enjoyed it I haven't enjoyed it because of the subject matter but I've enjoyed seeing the original tales to all of these tales that I know of in passing so I'm enjoying it for that and then the final color I have is this orangey color and that is when the goddesses are punishing women for what men have done to them. I say men at the minute has mainly been gods. What gods have done to these mortal women who haven't had a choice in the matter and then goddesses are coming along and punishing them for it. One thing to note with this is that this is I believe Roman. Um, so they have different names for the gods and goddesses but they are the same gods and goddesses. So like Zeus is known as Jupiter in this or also Jove which is, was a bit of a one to get my head around, but it's the same person. And Hera, Zeus's wife, is known as Juno in this. It, she, she's the, been the main one that's punishing people at the minute, well, punishing women for her husband's, also her brother, which is gross, um, indiscretions. So whenever he's gone to a woman and forced himself on her, she's then punished the woman. And it could be argued that that's her powerlessness coming through because she can't do anything to Zeus and so she gets her revenge on these women but that's still ridiculous. So yeah, so that's one thing that I've been enjoying about this book is seeing all those tales that I know of in passing and seeing where they've originated from and exploring it a bit more. Also seeing the gods and goddesses like the Greek names to the Roman names, I'm enjoying that. And also there's been like little bits in here which I think have been influenced by this book for such a long time, such as werewolves. It's a bit of a random one, but I just noted it in passing. And I didn't tab it because I haven't decided if I'm tabbing those sort of things yet because it's only been the one out of 60 pages so far. Could this possibly be the origin of the werewolf? Again, don't quote me on that because I don't study this stuff. This is just my own personal enjoyment. But it really did make it sound like. So there's this man, he's running. And it says, he fled in fear and reached the silent fields and howled his heart out, trying in vain to speak. With rabid mouth, he turned his lust for slaughter against the flocks delight and still in blood. His clothes changed to coarse hair, his arms to legs. He was wolf and yet kept some human trace. The same gray hair, the same fierce face, the same wild eyes, the same image of savagery. And it's that part where it goes, he was a wolf and yet still kept traces of being a man. That was like, is that the first werewolf? Is that where we got that from? Because if so, that's really cool. So that's why I'm enjoying this. Um, so it's never going to be a rush read where I'm going to sit there and read all of it in one go because I am really enjoying picking apart these stories and seeing the different influences as well as noting the fact that these women are so mistreated by gods and goddesses and a lot of the time the men in these stories get off scot-free and it's really frustrating. But yeah, I don't know if I'm going to read any more today. If I do, it's only going to be a little bit. Um, I don't think I'm going to be reading 60 pages in one go again unless of course I'm really feeling that need to like let's go in depth and explore this but I don't want to do it when I'm too tired. So I am thinking of picking up a different book. I don't know what it's going to be. Part of me thinks I could do The Way of Kings part two because I do have the rest of the week and I should be able to finish it in that time but at the same time part of me is like do I just go for something lighter? So I haven't decided that bit yet. For now, I'm going to get some editing done. I might as well use the time while I've got it. Uh, but yeah, that's that's it really for this update. It was actually quite a long one, but I've, <laughs> I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed my reading. I'm enjoying tabbing books. I enjoy it every time I do it. I just don't do it for every single book and normally I explain that. Anyway, I'm going on a tangent and this is already 15 minutes long so let me leave you in peace and get on with my day and I will update you with whatever book I decide to pick up next. Let's just do this update. <laughs> it is the afternoon and yeah. You know what? This week 
has just been one thing after another. So as we know, I'm on antibiotics due to an infection. Love that for me. I also, it's that time of the month, so my back is killing me. And I now have a really bad sore throat and a raging headache. So I've been popping the painkillers like candy today. It's... <sighs> Can I please have a break? Could we please have a break? Because I was meant to be doing seven nights in a row and I haven't been able to go to a single one of them yet. And I don't even know if I can work because of the antibiotics that I'm on. So I'm waiting to find out about that. And then just when I was thinking, okay, I feel okay enough that I can get back to work. My worldie goes, oh no, we're going to give you a head cold as well to make you feel even worse. Why? In other news, the reading is going really well. I did decide to pick up The Way of Kings Part 2. I was really feeling a comforting book. And I know that's weird to say about epic fantasy and it's heartbreaking in places, it's comforting, but I think because it's a reread, it just is so much easier for me to read and like just, it's not requiring loads and loads of brain power because this is the third time that I've read it. So a first time, yeah, I would have had to pay so much more attention, but I know these characters, I know the things that it's linking to and stuff. So this is just a fun reread that I'm now tabbing. So I'm up to, chapter 48 page 156 now I know chapter 48 and 156 page that doesn't sound quite right but that's chapter 48 of the whole book I have the way of kings in the split paperback editions so I had already read that one in December the first part and I'm finally continuing on otherwise they're massive chunky books like that which this is the most recent one and I will be replacing this with the split paperback editions just because this is so heavy to hold um as much as i do love it n all my editions are in paperback and i only got the hardback because i wanted to read it straight away um, which is probably what i'm going to do with whenever the next book gets released but eventually when i make my way to this one i will be just getting the split paperback editions and then probably giving this one away because i i'd never sell books and i would rather give them to a charity shop and have people that have been wanting to read it have a good time i know a lot of people could then sell this one because it's not in print anymore you could sell it for quite a bit of money i'm not about that life and also i'm lazy so <laughs> but yeah so i made good progress um read quite a good chunk yesterday because i'm just not doing anything else really so even today i didn't even bother getting out of bed until gone midday because i was so worn out so i've literally been up for about two hours <laughs> and it's the afternoon obviously because i didn't get up till midday my head's hurting and thoughts are hard but I really wanted to just update um, because I have quite a good tabbing system already um, but I haven't put in my set tabs of what they're going to be yet just in case it changes which is weird because I didn't really tab this one, well I didn't tab this one at all, I underlined a few things but that was it but I'm really in my tabbing era, this week is the week of tabbing books and I think it does make me enjoy it more, anyway beside the point I have three colour tabs that I'm using. We have orange for things that are foreshadowing of things to come, which is great. Um, I feel like I should split that into two more colours with, because this book is so expansive, I feel like I should split it into the types of foreshadowing that we're getting, um, but I feel like that is more more effort than I have right now. But yeah, so that's what we've got at the minute. I also have this pale greeny blue colour um, and that is for moments of depression because we are following Caladan and he really struggles with depression and he's had it all his life, he's always struggled with it um, and we're seeing him battle that and there are points when he's happy and he's trying but he knows it's always there and he knows he's always got to really push past it and try hard with that. Um, and I really just wanted to document that. So there's been quite a few of those, but that's expected in this book. And then the final colour I'm using is pink. A light pink. And that's just for quotes that I really like. Um, and again, there's been a few of those. A couple of the quotes I haven't, I couldn't decide whether they should be the depression or just pink because I loved it like I wasn't sure what colour tab to use so I ended up going with I loved it because the very next page there was depression quotes anyway I could have done two tabs on the same page but because this is such a big book I don't want to use up all my tabs so 
I couldn't quite decide, um, but the quote was, what was hope except another opportunity for failure? How many times could a man fall before he no longer stood back up? And I just think that's such a powerful quote. And yes, it's depressing, so it'd work for that tab. But I also just thought in general, that was such a good quote. Um, so I went with pink. So that's the three tab in system that I've got. I do want to read more today and I probably will, but it is taking me a little bit longer because of my headache and I just feel a bit brain foggy and not really, really able to focus on a lot of stuff. But yeah that's what we're up to. I think, to be fair, I've done pretty well. Like, I haven't read any more of The Metamorphosis because I've been feeling so, like, out of it, um, and I probably won't today either, but considering that I finished a book and I've made good progress in another book and I started The Metamorphosis, I feel like it's been a good start to the month of March and end of February but yeah anyway I'm just gonna talk nonsense so I'm gonna go and I don't know when I'll update you again I just will base it on how I feel but I am enjoying my reread of this it is great and I know I didn't do much explanation of this but I'll get to that next time because I'm I'm worn out right now anyway yeah good afternoon I am feeling a bit better <laughs> The last couple of days were really quite rough, like, I'm not gonna lie, it was really, really hard. I got the head cold, it just got worse and worse. My throat is, thankfully, better, That that's fine now. Um, I still have a bit of a headache left over, but nothing terrible like it has been. Like, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, like, this week was just one thing after another in terms of my health. It was absolutely dreadful. Um, I'm feeling better enough that I'm going back to work tonight. So I'm only working two nights out of the seven, but it's what it is. But yeah, I am feeling enough that I can go into work. Not 100% yet, but better, which is honestly all I can ask for at the minute. Like it's been up and down journey. So yeah, it's, it's not been great, but you know what? It is what it is. Now, reading wise, because I was so out of it last time I updated, I don't think I even told you what The Way of Kings was about and the fact that I'm reading it so let me just talk about that because I am now almost finished with it. Um, I read quite a bit yesterday actually. The day before I didn't really do anything. I actually just slept most of the day because I was so out of it and even yesterday I was on and off napping throughout the day because the smallest of things like I would get up for like two hours, do something and then I'd be absolutely wiped out and have to nap for an hour or so and then I could carry on. Um, but in between those naps I did read quite a bit so I'm now up to chapter 63 page 382 so I am about 150 pages away from the end so I'll definitely be finishing that up soon. I've also introduced a couple more colours of tabs so I've gone with some blue for truly sad moments so I don't know if you could see can you see my tabs? Yeah. So blue for the truly like gut-wrenching moments. And then I have this colour, which is basically the same colour as the page, um, but that is for hopeful moments because we are finally getting some hopeful moments for Kaladin and he desperately needs it. Um, so that's what those are. I've also changed the green ones slightly. I'm pretty sure I mentioned the fact that they were for depression in this book, but I've changed it to encompass mental health in general. It is mainly depression, but there is a character in here that does question his mental state, and I really wanted to tab those as well, but it is quite few, so I thought, you know what, let's just tab it with the green as well, and then I can change that to mental health, because again, I still haven't actually wrote down my tabbing system yet. So that's that. The tabbing system is extensive and I've enjoyed tabbing it so so much. Like I know I think I've mentioned that as well so <laughs> I'm sorry. I was so out of it I don't really know what I've said at this point um, but anyway the book synopsis I don't think I actually spoke about that. So this is part two of The Way of Kings. They are a thousand page books some of them more so, part of the Stormlight Archive, which is the epic fantasy that Sanderson has written within his Cosmere. Now, Cosmere is a universe that he's created and he's done several books that are within this Cosmere and they're all slightly different. The magic systems in that are all slightly different, but you do have little tidbits in each of the books that kind of accumulate within the Stormlight Archive series 
and I've had so much fun just noticing those little things. In this one it's mainly a person, but there's like little things that connect to other books and stuff, which is always a good time. But this particular series within the Cosmere is focused on war. So this first book we're mainly following Kaladin. Now you do get several different perspectives, but when I say our main character is Kaladin, I mean that as he is the character that you are following the most. His story arc is one that we will come back to continuously in every single part of the book. Other characters may drop off for a little while, and we don't actually see what they're up to and then we'll come back to them but Kaladin is the one perspective which you follow all the way throughout this book and you also get his past so each book in this series it's a four book long series at the moment but it is meant to be 10 and I think apparently I, mean, I don't know any of this for sure but it's being split into a five book series arc and then another five book apart from the same series. But each book will focus on a different main character that you're following and also get flashbacks to their past and the reason why they ended up where they're at. And Kaladin is someone who is a bridgeman and he is the lowest of the low. Like, is seen as the scum of the earth. And then you find out why and you're following that storyline and it's so horrible and awful. But Kaladin is part of Bridge 4 and you're seeing him rally them together and try and make something of their lives rather than just waiting for death to find them um and so it's a beautiful story arc my hair is a mess today just it's been a week so yeah, you're following that story arc and it's lovely but interspaced with that because Kaladin is a bridge runner for a Alethi he's a Lethi as well but for one of the high princes in a Lethi um in this massive war and the reason why this war is going on is because the Alethi are fighting the Pashendi and they are doing this war it's been going on for years because the Pashendi assassinated the Alethi king on the day of a peace treaty and as a result all the Alethi high princes all banded together to go to war with the Parshendi but they, it's been going on so long that they've lost sight of what they're doing and so you're seeing Kaladin and the lesser part of that war like the way that the Alethi see them is they're so low down and stuff nobody cares about them so you're getting that perspective but then you do also follow someone called Danlir and I uh, pronunciations of these names I'm really sorry um but he is the late king's brother and so he's one of the very high-born men he is world renowned for being a ruthless killer which is something that the Alethi pride themselves in because that's one thing that the Alethi are known for is killing and going to war and they're a very aggressive people but he's starting to question it and he's questioning whether what they're doing is even right the fact that they have lost sight of it but it's a very un way of thinking and so you're seeing all the politics surrounding that you then follow Danla's son Adolin and Adolin is very worried about his father's mental state he's very concerned about it um, and so you, from those two perspectives you see the other end of this war and all the politicking and the things that are going on behind the scenes that Kaladin just doesn't know. And then our other perspective that you get is Shallon. Now we haven't seen much of Shallon in this latter half of the book. We saw her for a little bit at the start but then that's it. And she is someone that is trying to become an apprentice to Jansa who is the current king's sister and she is this world-renowned scholar she's been traveling all over the world trying to find things which is it's something that she keeps under wraps but it plays such an important part within this series and Shallon is determined to apprentice onto her so that she can then steal something because her family is in ruins. Now Shallon doesn't really have anything to do with the war but it shows you the scholarly side of the ill. Like I said that's going to be a bigger part to play later on in the series. Now everything I've said there sounds really long-winded and yet that is the bare bones of what is going on because it's such a massive series. You've got the magic system in this which is absolutely phenomenal and is done in such a way that you're learning it alongside our characters and so it doesn't feel info dumpy at any point it just works you also have little interludes and in those interludes you get three different chapters of three different perspectives that show you little things that are happening around the world while this war's going on and it's just so fantastically written like everything is so well done like it's amazing. The world that he has created is mind-blowing. I love it so much. So yeah, that's what this book is. <laughs> a really, really long-winded way of trying to cover everything. But it's such a big series and that's just the first 
little snippet. So yeah, what I've given you doesn't cover much of the series at all, but it gives you an idea of what it's about. But yes, fantastic. I really, really enjoy this book. I'm hoping I might finish it today. I don't know. I'm kind of tempted to do some editing, but at the same time I have a headache and I have noticed that lately I've been doing like edits like when I've been tired and stuff. And so then the videos that are going up, like there's just little things that I'm like, oh, I forgot this. I forgot that. Like in the weekly vlog that's going up today, there's a whole cooking section that I forgot to put in because I just forgot. So you, it just goes from me chatting to me chatting to me chatting straight away, like rather than having the little interludes that I like to do of like little snippets that I'm doing. It uh, Yeah, that didn't happen because I, I just forgot the footage. I forgot I had it on my phone and just forgot to upload it and edit it. And so you never got a cooking portion that I did actually do, which it's just little things like that that I'm just like, oh God. And so that also makes me question, should I actually edit today or should we leave it because I am so out of it? Like, not fully, like I'm so much better than I have been. So I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> um, or I may just chill out and read, um, we'll see. I've got work, so I don't want to be pushing it too much. I've got, I think about seven hours, seven hours or six hours before I need to leave. It's two o'clock and I leave just after nine. So seven hours. Um, so I'll probably nap a little bit and also read and potentially edit. Whatever I edit that I'm going to have to go back over. So I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, that's me just rambling away as you're all used to. But I hope you're all doing well. Certainly a lot better than what I have been this week. But the reading side of this week has gone so well. I've enjoyed every single book that I've picked up. I know I haven't read any more of The Metamorphosis, but I just, I don't have the headspace for this at the minute. The minute I start getting that head cold, I just could not focus. And this requires a bit more focus, not massively because the writing is easy to follow, but more than what I've got at the minute. Um, so unfortunately I haven't read any more of that, but I do want to get back to it. But I think I'm going to save that for when I'm actually like 100% better because otherwise that's just not going to go well. But yeah, okay, right. I'm still rambling at you. I'm going to, I'm going to go probably chill and nap and we'll see what I actually get done. And I'm probably just gonna update you the very last bit when I wrap up this vlog once I've finished the book. So we'll see when that is. But yeah, okay, that's it, we're done, we're done. afternoon I am feeling really good like really well and I'm really pleased that at the end of this week I am back to feeling a hundred percent like yes this is great um but okay right reading I did finish The Way of Kings part two as you saw I tabbed it up we have the extensive tabbing list and look at that that is just beautiful. I can really understand why people like this now. It's so lovely. I really am enjoying this. I think my goal is to try and tab at least 50% of the books that I read this year. That would be awesome. How am I gonna track that? I have no idea. But this is just so satisfying. And I actually think I enjoyed the process a lot more because I really had to think about what I was reading and that would make me go, okay, I really liked this quote. Where would it fit in the scheme of things? And it was nice to have things to pay attention to. So I loved this reread. I'm so excited to carry on to the second book. Don't know when that's going to happen because there was a couple month break even between part one and part two of this. 
but definitely going to carry on tabbing the rest of them although I did use up a lot of tabs like there was a couple colors which I just completely finished out but it was worth it that was an amazing way to end the week I'm actually thinking should I do a wrap up of like all the books I've read at the end of a week because I've never done that before so I'm going to try it this time and then you let me know whether you like that or not but before we get into that I came home to some book mail yesterday and I it was too late to update and stuff so we're gonna open it now I didn't order this I don't know what it is so we're gonna have a little look okay it's definitely a book it's a paperback book ah awesome we have Finley Donovan is killing it and this is by Ellie Cosmano and let me see if there's a note there is a uh, Naomi thank you so much Naomi you really shouldn't oh my gosh Naomi you do you spoil me too much but thank you <laughs> so she says I hope you enjoy this and Naomi messaged on one of my videos about how she had read Finley Donovan is killing it and have I been able to get myself a copy and unfortunately every single time I've been going into a bookshop for the last few months I keep an eye out for this book and I can never find it the second book sure but this book, no, not at all. And it was really frustrating. And it was getting to the point where I was thinking, oh, maybe I'll just order it online. But I was really hoping to buy it in store. Uh, but now, now I have a copy and I'm so excited. Uh, this is gonna be so fun. So this is, so from everything that I've been hearing about, because it's been going around quite a lot, Finley Donovan is an author. She is a struggling author. She's divorced or going through a divorce with her husband. She's got kids to raise and she's talking over a synopsis of her book and about how she's going to be killing off one of the main characters and somebody overhears this in a restaurant and assumes that Finley Donovan is a hit woman and uh, it goes from there. And I'm so excited. It sounds so fun. All the reviews that I've heard have been nothing but good things and I have been desperate to read it. So thank you so much, Naomi. I actually think maybe we just ignore my TBR and read this because we've made a good progress on my TBR. We got the biggest book off of it already for March. So there's not many books left to go, but maybe. Keep watch for next week's vlog and you will see. But this is perfect. I'm so happy with it. But okay, let's do that wrap up of all the books that I've read this week. And then you let me know if you want me to include that in future vlogs. Okay, so I started off this week reading For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing. And I loved this book, Dark Academia thriller book, really creepy. And again, tabbed it's beautiful. I loved the different things that were explored in this book and it really is quite sinister and creepy with what one of the characters does but don't go into it thinking that it, you're going to be guessing who the murderer is and things like that because you don't. You have the perspective of the murderer in here and that's very very obvious from the beginning that that's what's going on. I liked it. I thought it was a good time. I loved the twists and turns that it took and I just thought it was a really interesting commentary on things. I then did start The Metamorphosis by Ovid and this is a book which I've said I'm probably not going to finish this month but I did want to start and I got 60 pages in which I'm really pleased with that start. I think it's a really solid start and again I am tabbing this. I haven't settled on all the tabs yet because I have only read 60 pages but we have a few different ones and this is just some Greek mythology. It's actually Roman but their mythologies cross over, it's just the names of the gods and goddesses are different but I'm really enjoying seeing the original stories that go to so many myths that I know of in passing and now I actually get to know where they originated from. This one is epic poetry but it's lots of short poems which make it really accessible reading. And then of course finishing up with the Chanka Way of Kings part two and we know my thoughts on this because I literally just said it but I think that is a really solid reading week and also that is so pleasing like I love this so much like I said I really want to carry on with Tabin because it just uh, loved it this week but yeah those are the three books that I have started slash finished this week and I think that's an amazing start finishing up for Bruce TBR and then starting March it's just a really solid hit so I actually do think that I may treat myself and just go off the TBR and read this one today. I don't know how far I'm going to get into it but I feel like it's going to be a really fun quick read so I feel like this is only going to take me two days to read if anything and I am off for the next few days so I think I'm going to do that and then we'll go back to the March TBR but like I say check that one out for next week's vlog but I think for today what should the emoji be? Um well I was ill 
So let's put that little emoji of the person with like the thermometer sticking out of the mouth or just something to do with being ill because that's all this vlog was really, me being ill and reading books, which let's face it, the fact that I got to read so much is not a bad thing. So I'm like 50-50. Anyway, that's it for this week. So thank you so much for watching. And if you have enjoyed this video, please do give it that thumbs up, subscribe and comment to let me know that you're here. Those three things are so important to helping this channel grow. And yeah, that's it. So social media links and anyone I've mentioned will be linked below. And I will, of course, catch you in the next video. Thank you.